Welcome back. Today is week two, Monday, of our corona, Kill the Coronavirus uh, fly tying competition. This week's all streamers. Uh, uh, last week's deal, the rules were no synthetics. This week's rule, we're doing streamers, uh, single hook or articulated. The rules are, there are no rules, but if you enter something with a dragon tail, you probably won't win. Just saying. I don't, I'm just one of the judges, but just saying. So we're going to go over, like I said, you got to send us your fly. We're going to judge it. Uh, you'll, you'll have a couple weeks. You know, the thing's going to go as long as this, we're all in shut uh, lockdown. So send us what you've got and we'll judge it. And then at the end, we're going to have the uh, Maverick, Sage Maverick fly rod will be one of the, uh, or a, uh, let's see. If the winner of each, sorry about that, the winner of each one, it will get a $250 uh, gift certificate. The grand prize winner will have a Maverick uh, streamer rod or a Renzetti vice of your choice. So it's a, it's a pretty cool deal. So let's uh, get on with this. And what I'm going to do today is a bang tail. This fly has two versions. Essentially, it's got the bang tail with the hook running like this. This is a burner. This is a fly that's made to go like this. <clears throat> and then there's the one, I think we've already done this one, the flat liner, which has got the hook that's flat, so it's down more vertical. And this is kind of a dying, kind of a dying fly that's supposed to go all over. We do this fly in a lot of colors, man. We do it in, I grabbed a bunch of them. There's the, the yellow and olive, the olive and white, the baby brown trout, the gray and white, uh chartreuse and white what else i don't know there's other ones too i think i lose track of them and so and this one we're going to show i'm going to talk about this later because we're doing an entire this is the saltwater series as is this gray and white one this is the saltwater single hook series the big difference is it's got a saltwater hook on it and there's no back hook and 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 frankly i do a lot of single hook stuff people are always writing in <clears throat> or calling you know, I, I'm in California, I can't use two hooks. What hook do I cut off? You always cut the back hook off. They always eat the head to stun it. They're not hitting the ass. So cut the back hook. And I, I'm going to do this one. I'm going to cut it off and show you. Well, I'll break it off and just show you how to do it. So this fly has, there's other things about this. And, and I want everybody to see this. This is, nobody likes when guys pull out rulers. Uh, but this is a four inch fly. And this, the thing about this fly as I probably, I probably fish more, you know, five and a half is, you know, the upper end of the dungeons. Overall, I mean, everybody thinks that my fly is huge. Again, this is a four inch fly. I know a lot of you think this is a six inch fly. It's not. It's four inches. And I do an almost, um, this is a new series right here. If you look at this, this is a six inch fly. There's its little brother. That's a, that's the four inch. And so I like to have all of my flies in multiple sizes and so if you've got one you really really dig and maybe you're doing this six or seven inch you know flat line or bang tail whatever it is do a mini of it just like with the dungeons we do minis we do the boogeyman minis we do the barrelies everything we can i mean they're not always you know you can go out hunting for the one everybody thinks they're gonna just because you got a big fly means you're gonna catch a big fish not on a big fly big fly bite there's no sense beating your head against the wall scale down, find the fly size they're looking for with the color and make sure everything's working. And so this fly here is the smaller version. I probably fish this one more than I fish the big one, especially in this particular fly. I just, I really like it. And this is, there's not a lot of difference. There's the big one right there and there's the little one, right? Not a lot of difference. You can see it in the close up. It's not a, a huge difference, but if they're not on this, scale down see if you can find what they're looking for and the same thing goes with your sculpting style stuff so on to this thing we're going to go into the materials <clears throat> and i want to show you just a couple of things as we go along i'm going to use i'm going to use a 7052 vertical ring eye on the back hook that's this hook here originally where'd you go originally i tied this on a b10s stinger back hook all right it's all fine. It doesn't really matter. They're virtually the same length. Just the, the stinger's got a bigger uh, gap in it, <clears throat> bend, and that doesn't. But it's got the horizontal 
eye as opposed to the vertical eye. And this is the 7052. This is the hook I designed for doing the back hook simply because it's easier to tie in. It's way easier to tie in this vertical eye than it is to tie in a, a, a horizontal eye. On the front hook's going to be a number two. And again, feel free to sub any hook, especially on those back ones. Make sure it's a light wire hook. Don't make it work, you know, don't make the hook outweigh it. The front one's going to be a size two, 70, 50. And here's a, and just so you can, you can see right there on the close up that one's a horizontal and one's vertical. I like to have a horizontal hook on the front because you'll see when I run the wire through, it, it's, uh, everything's on top now because it's vertical back here. It'll go through the eye. I always wrap mine around. If you don't wrap it around, it doesn't matter. If you just if you come up and glue it, then it doesn't matter if you use a vertical or a ring eye or a down eye, whatever. And so, and a lot of these hooks, I get, I'm getting a ton of questions. So I got a size one B10S here and a size, uh, what was this, a two? Two. Two, uh, yeah, two 70, 50. And you can see the overall tying distance is the same. It's the, it's just one's got a big, big gap and one doesn't. You can put this right inside it. So it's just, it's just what you like. And a lot of the other Universal Predator one, same thing, you know, big gap, just like that. It's just, it's just whatever you, I tie in so many damn hooks, I lose track of the things. So anyway, there we go with that. Now on the tails, just on this particular fly, back with the ruler thing. I made it easy because I get asked constantly and I just, I, I cut one in advance. They're two and a half, this is a four inch fly. Two and a half inches on the tail is gonna end up with a four inch fly with this hook. So, <clears throat> so if you wanna measure those and we're gonna, you can cut them in advance and do them all this. So let me go through the materials real quick and we get back to that. So as the tail goes, you're gonna have schlopping as a tail, or you can use the American, the Whiting Americans. This is what I use. This is Schlappen. It's all the same size. This is the American. On this particular size, you can, I've got both of these. I've got the neck on this side, and I've got the, the saddle on the other side. On my big flies, I like the saddles because it's a little webby, a little bit more Schlappen-ish. Where'd they go? Uh, right here. It's a little more schloppany you know where it's the, the the saddles are where it's a little webbier and thicker on this particular one you can get it and I pulled them off here just so you could see I pulled a neck hackle and I pulled a schloppen virtually identical you almost can't tell the difference when it's this short and it's down here and you're only working with that much of it it's not that big of a deal so you can get away and so if you like to in the versatility of a neck when you're running a neck, you've got a lot more small ones. So if you're gonna do some traditional flies, you can use it for hackle. You've got those, you've got a plethora of big fly, uh, big you know neck hackles up here that are almost identical to schlopping. In the back, you know, on the saddles, you know, they come one way or the other. I've just got them packaged together for me. But in the back, you don't get the versatility that you do out of a neck. So if you're gonna tie some different sizes and you're gonna do a few, you know, of each, the saddle is, uh, I mean, the neck may be a little bit or better choice. It doesn't matter. Uh, it's just it's really close, the hackle is. So then we're going to have uh, a little bit of flat. So we've got the 7052 vertical for the hook. <clears throat> we're going to have a little bit of Fire Tiger um, Flashaboo. We're going to have a little bit of a collar for this, which is going to be your Marabou and Yellow Marabou. Uh, let's see, we're going to have the feathers we just talked about. Then we're going to have the body, which is going to be a polar chenille. This is UV gold. We're going to have, uh, again, we're going to have stack some uh, marabou. And what are we going to have next? Oh, the top, there's two different tones. Two marabous, we're going to have that on the top. And then we're going to have the head, which is, oh, we got the articulation wire, which is uh, 0.38, surf line, whatever you like. On the head, we're going to be two-toned, as you saw on the fly. It's going to have a yellow underside, and then it's going to have a... Sh I, I mix these. You could do straight olive if you wanted. In the old days, this sculpin olive was a little bit more olive, and I keep trying to get Greg to... I keep bugging him on these videos to go back to the old one, but this one's a little more reddish, right? Kind of reddy brown. I mix these two to get the old color, and I, I really... And I, and I mix a lot of these. I love this stuff. 
this 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 laser yarn is, or laser dub I mean is one of the more versatile because this head I started doing this head way back when this style of stacking the heads came about back when I was in Michigan with the original T and A and we used wool and I, I loved the wool I still do but I started using Greg's uh, Senyo's laser dub and man I just got hooked on it I, I love this stuff I do it with like my belly bumpers, my TNAs, my uh, flat liners, bang tails, all of them use it. And I almost always blend them. And the, the, the range of colors is unbelievable. And so I was just working on a belly bumper uh, bluegill. And, and, and it, the blues and all the colors you can work with, it's, it's unbelievable. So I'm going to show you. We're going to mix it. You know, it's no different than how I mix all my stuff. Last but not least will be the eyes. The eyes are, <clears throat> I'm going to use Jurassic eyes because that's what originally on it. But they quit making the damn thing, so now I'm going to go to the and I, and these are all they're all good. I just got used to one, you know. You get kind of standardized. Like I'm going to use this hook on every one, and so I'm going to. Uh, this is just the fish skull eyes. They've got a plethora of colors too. Uh, great eyes, uh, uh, no problem. They're all. It's 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 just what you like the looks of. Man, there's a ton of eyes out there. So um, we'll actually tie this fly today. This fly, it's a little complicated looking. But it's really not that it's really not that complicated. It's just stacks, and it's <clears throat> it's kind of like the original T and A bunker. If you go back in time, uh, it was it was that was done Palmer chenille or Palmer wrapped, where you palmered your marabou, and I did different colors. So I'd palmer it, move forward, palmer it, put one on top, then I'd palmer it and do it the same thing. Kind of game changerish. How you know you wrap it and wrap it and wrap it, but I didn't trim them. And so then we started stacking them on top. And man, the break and the look was so much better. I pretty much uh, hardly ever do the old school style anymore. So I'm going to leave myself. I'm going to start this thread. I'm using GSP 100. I'm going to start my thread, leave myself a little bit of room for the eye. I want to find that sample. So when you look inside here, so there's your, you, you don't have much for it. There's no underbody on this hook. It's just, it's just the thread. And so give yourself a, a base. <clears throat> Grab some fire tiger. You can kick that wire in. The wire? I can get all that stuff out of here. I'll be digging around for it in a minute. Just that and that and that and that. And that boo. And that Perfect. boo. Don't forget this. We're going to use Willy Bugger Marabou here in a second on this connection. You don't have to use that, but you can, it's, it's easier if you do for this one on this little one. So on the fire tiger, this stuff has. I just reach in. I don't really do too much sorting on this kind of stuff, but sometimes on the fire tire, because there's a ton of colors in this thing, sometimes you'll reach in and you'll get basically all yellow or something. Just grab in and, and, and make sure when you look at it, there's a handful of the copper in the, this color and the other color. And just You don't need a lot of this if you've got five, six strands. You can always cut this stuff up. If, if it looks like a disco ball out there, and it's just too much for your eye and you don't like it, cut it up, bring it in, cut some up. And so take your, take your sample, knowing that the tail's back here, and I want this to be longer than the tail, so I just, I cut it in half. I like to wet it so it's easy to work with so they're not stranded. Basically, I tie this in the middle of the material. One side, I roll it to the back side, whatever, over here, three nice four turns like this, bring it back at you and just cinch it down. That's all there is to it. And so this we're just going to leave back here until you pick your feather up and you're going to put your feather in and just look it over and you'll be able to see then you can cut that later if you want to cut it now. I like it to stick just lightly past the tail. All right. So when you look at just this, it's hanging just a little bit past the tail. If that starts to bother me, I cut it back. It just go in there. Always keep scissors with you when you're fishing. All right, where did that? So now I'm gonna, I had it all set up here. So, and I've said this on a hundred different videos. When you've got your marabou is one length, woolly bugger marabou, where'd it go? It was sitting right in front of me, there it is. The woolly bugger marabou, this stuff's shorter. And so it really isn't long enough for most tails but it's phenomenal for doing this little bit of uh, palmer we're going to do right here because this is just going to be the cover. All right, first we got to put in our tail. 
So I'm gonna, I pulled this out in advance just to show you those two. So when you do this, just when you're, when you're matching these things up, just take the sediments, you get the same length, and I'll get that to the camera as soon as I can see it. Give me a, there, and you want these, it's fighting me a little bit because they're, you want, you want to grab from both sides. When you have your neck or your saddle, try to grab from each side because you're going to have a little bit different bend to them and they'll match better when you face them because you're not going to put them shiny side to shiny side. You're going to the dull side to the dull side. So both, when you, when you tie them in, the, the shiny side is out. So match these up. Make sure they're shiny to shiny. Match them up like this. So they're pretty close to even. And you can see right through to the back one and just, just get them the same length. If you tie them in and put them up there in the hook, that's fine too. But I already had that one to show you how long it was. So, and you can tie these in at the same time if you want. <clears throat> if, it, if it fights you, don't do it. I'll tie them in one at a time. And so just put it on the back side of the hook. I like this to cover the hook. You can, and just, when you, when you put in a feather, if that feather starts fighting you, if it rolls one way or the other, a couple things you can do. One, you can bite that down and you put it, so you want the back of the feather to be around, see how that's back here, but I'm gonna put this on top of the hook. So I'm gonna come in here and when I, when I smash that, the phone rings. When, they, when you smash the top of it, it makes it easier to tie in. And if it's starting to fight you, two thing, one of two things is usually wrong. One, you put your first turn on way too tight. You put it on and tight. When you put it in, you just kind of set it and just the first one's tight, but it's not really tight. And you let it just progressively one, two, three forward and you won't, and it won't roll on you. If it's really a round feather, if it's having, if it's got too much round, most of these feathers are relatively flat. You can bite it, you can take a pair of pliers. All you gotta do is break that stem down and you're good, it'll sit right on top. Now match this on this side, same thing. Come in, you know, make sure it's where, about where you want it, everything looks good, and then just progressively tighter wraps as you go forward. It's not gonna go anywhere, it's gonna sit back there and just sit, you know, it'll lay down. If you really crank on that first one, It'll always want to roll. It's no different than putting on a synthetic, like on a rubber leg or whatever. And if you're, if you don't think you had, if, if you don't think it's tight enough or whatever, you just can't, you just put, you know, six, seven turns of thread on there. Give it a little dab of glue if you, if you're worried about this one. If it's not working for you, I don't like glue. I prefer you just do it, you know, without it. So now we're going to take this woolly bugger marabou, which I told you, you can see this is a traditional, just a regular strung marabou. You can see how long and wispy it is, right, up here. That's the same. It's a third as long. And so, but what I'm going to do, there's, I'm going to take this, strip off the junk, and I'm going to, all this is, is this, this is starting to build a little bit of bulk to the fly, a little bit of bulk down in here where you can, you're just trying to make things start to look more like a body of a minnow, right? What do I do with that thing? There it is. And so come in here, make sure that the, make sure when you bend these that they, can, they stay bent. They don't, if you bend it and it breaks like that, you, if you tie it in, it's gonna split, unravel on you. you. You need like two turns of this. You don't need a ton. But that's what, this is my, it, with Wooly Bugger Marabou, I do this on my dungeons. I use these for skirt covers for the front. I tie it in one on a side. It's perfect, but it's not the best tailing material if you ask me. But So come from left to right, bump your thread with your material, come on the back side of it. And I didn't say, I'm gonna go backwards here. I'm tying this in. I'm gonna leave, I left myself room I'm at about the one quarter point when I tied in my feather. I'm gonna tie this in and I'm gonna need two turns, but I still have to have room for the head 
and I still have to have room for the uh, marabou that's going to go on top of it. So get back in here. And I need room for two turns. So there's figure eight, left to right, right to left, two turns in front, nice cinch down. <clears throat> Where are those things? This is a pretty fine, I'm going to do this without the rotary, just I'm going to do most of it. So I'm going to come around, get back here, you'll it's just pretty fine on the end. You can see my hackle stem. I go around one, just look it over, you know, two. And we're going to do just like I do with all my palmers. I screw up. I'm not used to using this manual stuff. That's what I like about my Renzetti. One, two, and I'm going to go forward. Third one, right over top of it, catch it. Now take your two fingers and your thumb, just wet them a little bit and just go right over top of that stem. Just a little bit like that, leaving yourself room and build a little spot for the head. Now it's starting to cover that up. We're going to take a single plume. I'm going to use, I didn't mention this, I'm going to use the Wooly Bugger Mini Bard Olive on these things. Uh, and all of these you'll see like, it doesn't matter which one, Pretty much all of them, I'm either using this mini bard or I'm using the uh, <laughs> I'm using the uh, chickaboo, the little bard chickaboo. I love this. I like this barring here. And this is the brown olive version. So pick through. Just this one's going to be the back one. It doesn't have to be super thick. Just get one that you like the looks of. And there's going to be three more stacks on this, so you're going to have plenty of room to layer. I, I really, a lot of my flies, this big series, new one, all these, the flatliners, the big, the bang tails, all these things, they have stacks, which means there's two or three or four stacks, depending on the fly. I, I really dig that. When it gets wet, if you look at it, it'll be like, it, it, when it moves, it just seems to give it a, a three-dimensional look. It's not just monotone, and it just looks a lot more lifelike to me. So I'm going to take this one, I'm going to go about a third of the way back, and this one doesn't have to be super thick if it, I'll, I'll decide, as soon as I tie that in, I'm going to decide if it looks thick enough to me, and it'll, if it's not, just add another one to it. What do you think? I think it looks a little light. Okay, we'll give it another one. But don't, don't overdo this back one, because it has to, this one has to be really fluttery, and so, and you're, again, you're going to have multiples on here. <laughs> if you, and I've mentioned this before, I'm sure, but if you don't like, I use a lot of the olive. Uh, or I mean clear thread. If you want that to be olive, you can take any Sharpie and hit that just that fast and it'll be any color you, you want purple, pur pur any Sharpie, anything you've got. I don't care. It takes, it takes dye so quickly and you can use one thread that way. Uh, you can hit it with a little glue if you want. Let me use this zap because it's sitting right there. If you, especially the GSP, if you hit it with a, uh, I'm just, usually I use well, just a lacquer based stuff. But there's the, so that's just the back side of this. Now we're going to get the 7050. When you set these jaws on these, this is one of the things I really like about this Renzetti device, uh, these jaws is how easy this is. You see, I stopped, I was doing this, and people have asked me, and I forget to say anything about it. And this is the versatility of these jaws. They can hold a huge hook. You come in here, and you never want this to be super tight. You want it to just barely be touching, and then let the cam come up, and that way it's not really reefing on the jaws your vice. It doesn't matter if you're using a Dynaking, a Peak, I don't care which kind it is. You never really want to have to crank on your vise to have that hold. And you, there's no way you're going to move that, but you adjust the front. If you're using the old-fashioned kind, you release the collet and let it come back. 
back and forth, a little bit more work, but you should do it on every one of them. All right. Now we're going to take, <clears throat> I'm going to leave, now you, remember we're going to, this is a stacked head, right? So we have to have room for the head. If you don't have a sample, just kind of guess it. It's going to be somewhere in the quarter point, right in there where you're going to tie in your head when you're going to start. So you don't want to get up forward there and not have enough room to make them. Uh, personally, I think the heads on these things are, the, are just one of the most important parts of the whole deal. It's so lifelike that the way the head is shaped, the way we stack this, and you got that big eye, it's better to have too much. And you know, if you got a little tiny, you might as well not even do it, just make a thread head. So make sure you've got room to put that eye in there. And generally you can see it's going to be about twice as big as the eye of the head is. So I've got my articulation wire here. Grab a bead. It's a single red bead between these. If you don't like the red bead, use a different color. This is, but this is where this, uh, the vertical eye hook really, really, really makes things simple. <clears throat> I like to, it's a little hook so I don't grab it with my hand. I like to get that little notch right there. And so it just sits back in there and makes it a little easier. One bead, it's like these are killer glass beads or killer caddis glass beads or whatever glass bead you like. And so unlike the old days when we had, when we had a horizontal hook like that, like this one is, we had to tie this on the side. But now with these vertical ring eyes, ouch, you can hook your finger really easy. You put these both on top. Just give yourself a couple turns of thread just see where it is. I like that to when this bead touches, when I pull forward, you know, I'm going like this, when I pull forward, when that bead touches, I like to have another bead's width behind it, so I'm not, I don't want it to be standing up high, I don't want downward, just, just loose enough so it can articulate, but not so loose that it goes wrapping around the front hook. Its orientation is right, both threads are on top of the hook. Now we go forward, and this is what I was saying, how, why I like the horizontal on the front one because I like to wrap my wires through here and it it really makes this impossible for there's no way on earth you could ever pull this out of this hook could ever come the back hook could ever come undone not that that's a big deal because you hardly ever will get and I'm take that this was I, I measured that it's a five inch piece for this particular hook and I like to cut this off at about the halfway point. It helps me build my taper. So that was a five inch piece. Forward, take your sample, look things over now. I and mean, I can't overemphasize, if you don't have a sample, get a picture and just look at the orientation where things are. You're about to, you know, this fly goes, it's just stacks now. So put this in, you've got your, you've got your cover here. On the bigger ones, I put uh, a flash of boost skirt right here. I put the same, uh, sh the same flash of boo, and I tie about eight strands. I don't do it on the little ones. You can if you want, and just, just it's just a little bit more kick back there. So now we're just going to start stacking marabou. We're going to have this, and then we're going to have our Polish neil body. So we're going to tie this in first, and this is these are going to these are going to be. Uh, stacked halfway back each one roughly so I'm going to tie this in so that it let it wrap around and I'm going to do two on this on this particular one because I just think it's easier and so I'm, I'm trying to get this so you can see when I pull this into place when it's down here it's about halfway into the skirt here or into the the front skirt of the back hook and so just, I just pulled a bunch of these out. I'm not going to worry about sorting these out too much. So I put one on each side. And this one you can see. The back one you can't see as well. Give me you. I'm going to cut that off. I'm going to see where this wire ends. I'm going to cut them off so they end right there. This one's a little long. Give me you. Still a little long. I'm going to cut that off right. So when I, I'm going to wrap this forward. This one's kind of important. 
just to get everything started right, I got a kind of a mess going there. That looks like shh, bad. But these go back halfway into that one. Now we're going to take a, get yourself a pretty clean, thicker one if you can. That's so you don't have to double this one up. I prefer to have a single right here. Halfway now you'll be able to see it. So I go right halfway over it. Single set. Just same thing. We're going to go forward, clean that up because that got kind of ugly looking right there. And what we're doing is we're trying to get, we're going to stack, 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 stack. But I had that come underneath here. So I had one layer. I brought the marabou up to it, trying to level things out. Now we're going to take some gold <clears throat> UV polar chenille. There's no set number on this. Get back here. I'm going to just clean that up. That was looking pretty crappy. Looking pretty bad there for a second. So I'm going to go back to my rotary. Now with this stuff, make sure that the that it's and if you want, if you if when you do this, don't be afraid to trim this stuff. If if it's too long, you know, if you've got you know, I wish it was this long, just feel free to trim it once it's on there or do it right now. You could just go in and cut this off. I like how long it is, just about perfect. So I'm going to go through my first one. Notice that I make sure that it's nice and tight. I do one complete turn and watch. I hold it and stretch it. Make sure that first one is just locked. Do not have a sloppy first turn on this because that's where you're going to get the tooth in it. That's where it's going to break. Okay, did, I think I did two, three, four turns. You're done. I'm going to go one more because I'm right at that edge. I'll just, I'm going to cover that a little bit. <clears throat> so I like this to be and some of them, when I'm doing, I'm, I'll cut this off sometimes. I'm not going to do it on the video, but I, sometimes I don't like to fight that thing sitting up there. Sometimes I'll cut it off. Like, am I barely legal? Cut it off every time. That chenille that's shorter, I cut it off, start it on, start it, go be faster for me. That's up to you, however you want to do it. Now we're going to do another stack. This is, you can tip it upside down. Can you see that pretty good, Jeremy? Yep. All right, so we're trying to stack these so they go. So there's the halfway point of that of that material, right? Just bring it in. Two turns, just kind of get a hold of it. Look it over, make sure that, you know, is it going to lay back about at the half? Doesn't mean exact. If you like it all the way, whatever. Just So there's, give it two. Just work forward a little bit. Continue, keep building your tapers as you go. Come back, grab a nice full one. If you don't have a real full one on the second one, put two in. It should get progressively thicker as you go forward. It's a, it's a minnow. It's supposed to look, you know, it's got shoulders. It doesn't get skinnier as you go forward. I don't have two. I can't find one that is sufficient. I'm going to put two on. Um, yep, I'm going to end up putting two. So halfway, basically on this, you can see on the on the uh, barge stuff you can see real easy if you're in your halfway if you've got if you've got a compromise if you're you've, you're going through your materials and you've got a half of them your junk right and you're just like oh crap i don't have any good ones take your compromised one put it in right here don't use your best one right here tie it in then come in and find one that's cleaner and do your cover on the top so you're, you're building bulk, but you're going to look at this thing too. And if it doesn't look good to you, you're not going to fish it. So you wasted all this time. So take your good one. And if this, for example, if that one was just a little bad, maybe it's, it's complex, whatever color, it's, it's a few of the fibers aren't right. Use it, make it a little bit shorter, and then take this one and do that as your cover sheet right over top of it. Boom. And it's, you're done. And you got that nice layer effect. And again, work it forward, about the same. We've got to have room for this. But build your taper with your materials. we got to get more in here. So clean that up a little bit, a little sloppy. we got to get two more on here. So I didn't, I didn't mention this. When you do this, put your first one even on this one. Make sure it's nice and clean. Give it that first stretch. 
And then make sure your, your material, this is a corded material, it's, strength, it's, it's spun, right? And that's gonna fight it. Just work it and make sure it stays. Just keep turning it so you're not trapping your fibers. You've got all those fibers hanging out there. You want I did three turns on that one. Catch it. Before you move on too far, actually I didn't say that before. I like this to be behind me on this one, on the back side, so I don't fight it when I'm looking at it, when you tie it off. So it's out the back and you're not, if it's on this side, it's gonna fight you even more. You can put it in your material clip if you haven't screwed your material clip up like I did this one. My new invention that's not quite invented yet. Works good for what I did for it though. So, three turns here, repeat, 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 repeat. Same thing with this. I'm running out of marabou that's worthwhile. Grab a whole bunch of it. Got a good one on your elbow. I got a good one on my elbow? <laughs> Perfect. It's a halfer. So, this really, there's a good, on the front one, because this is the mini, I don't, it, yeah, my tendency is to overdress these, make it, the, and the more material you put on, doesn't necessarily make your fly look thicker, especially with these stack flies, when the water gets between the material and it starts to undulate between it, if it's really heavy, especially if you run synthetics, man, if you run synthetics, and you put what if you put too much on it kind of globs up and you want that water going between the materials and it gives you this big profile it fills out that materials that are in a light and it gives you a big profile without making the fly really heavy and it moves a lot better too so you've all heard me say don't put that in your mouth that's a nice that's a nice plume it'll yeah, it might be a little light. I'm going to work with that one on this, and then the next one I'm going to double up. So I'm right at the edge. Going over top. I'm right at the edge where I want a little bit more space, so all I did was went back over that just a little bit. This is going to be a, a double as well. It's, that's kind of a compromised feather right there. I don't like the looks of that one very much. I like these. But like I said, when you, ooh, that's for sure my cover one. That's, that's my favorite one in there. Just got to sort around. But because I'm doubling them up, I can get away with, in this halfway, the same thing, halfway. Nice tight turns coming forward. It's gonna be our last one. We'll have room here, we'll have room for our head. Same thing as before. Wrapping this, come over, one tight turn and stretch it. Hold the hold the hackle and everything to make sure it's make sure your uh, materials are all going to the left so you're not trapping them. Ain't she cute? Clean that up. Now, if you're, if for whatever reason, hopefully you're not too far forward right now. Okay, you still got, you still got four more stacks to put on here. <clears throat> if you are, if you're, if you're like, man, how much? And you pick up your sample, and you're like, oh man, I don't have any room for anything. Um, just go back over your materials a little bit. Don't, don't, you know, at this point, if things aren't right, if you don't have room for the head, back off something, stop and go backwards, but try to get something that's, don't, don't try to fight once the, the, the head, when, because we've got to stack that material too. So, just need one good, I'm gonna need two. Be great tailing material. Usually, right now I'd be going, man, I wish I could just find one good tail. I'm gonna need to put two on here. Well, it is what it is. You could use woolly bugger marabou on these too if you can find good ones because they're so short and they're, you know. So, up, upside down, half of it. 
it's going to get a double. One, two, third one anchor and go. You should be locked in right there. Hopefully I can find one fuzzy one. This is the one you see when you're looking at your, when you're looking at it and you're deciding which fly you should pick out of the box and you're going, wow, wish I hadn't shorted on that. Marabou. Okay. So we got the second one right on top. And this is the final. When you put this last one in here, it's the one when it when you're looking at this fly, if that one's really skinny, you're going to you're not going to like your fly. So if you need a third, whatever it takes just to make it look full, it's got to have a full belly underneath there. Okay, so this one's for sure getting a double on the top. This is the last one, so we double this one up. My buddy Kurt, he sorts all this stuff way in advance. And by the way, this stuff will bleed on itself. The other thing he does, Kurt, Kurt fixes a lot of my problems for me. Uh, the, he does this, he sorts all these in advance and he pairs them, but he washes it all but first. The guy's a genius, because this stuff will fade, or not fade, it'll uh, bleed. So there's one, I oh, need two or three good turns on it. Where did that fuzzy one go? Oh, look at that beautiful thing. This is the one you see when you're all, all done. Let's just put that in same length. Nice set to just crank on this. Now, We've got lots of room for the head. Work everything forward, get it all clean. Now, this is a three or a uh, two part. We're gonna put two uh, stacks of this material on. Well, what a mess Kelly's got going here. Pig. If this was Johnny, I'd be making fun of him. What a pig you are. So, we're gonna use these three colors, we're going to have the sculpin olive and the uh, olive, and I've taken these two out, and I've got about a, just about a third, two thirds, because you always want to go light on the darker one. You you go light as far as material. So I've got the one third on my toner. You can always add it, but if you put too much in, if you go 50-50, you get you kind of end up with a pretty dark material. Uh, shade of it but you can always you know if, if it's not right and all i'm doing is i'm folding this stuff over bring it up a bit there it is. i'm just taking it i'm folding it over and on this one i want it to when i talk about my dubbings when i'm talking about doing a dry fly dubbing or a wet fly whatever dubbing and i want it to be model looking and i want it to be you know a little random this isn't what i'm looking for here here i'm looking for a color that's that is a uh, one color you know, I want it to be closer to this olive. And I'm getting pretty close right now. Now it's just a judgment call. What do you like the looks of? You know, I thought it could use a little tiny bit more brown. And so all I'm doing is I'm folding it over. You see a big gap? See all that red right there, that red material? That's just over. That's a little more than I want in here. Just pick through it. And just We're going to get a nice, clean... And we're going to end up working with this, so the longer you can keep that, when you strand it, see how it's, it's nice and long, and I, I'm getting all the fibers. They're about an inch, inch and a half long anyway, and we're just trying to get them kind of laid out in the same. That's a good color. The yellow I don't have to worry about because it's got a yellow belly. And this is what makes this fly so sexy. You can just, and I don't care what you want to do with this. You can do anything you can blend these colors. You can make this such a cool looking bug. And I'm sure somebody will for the competition. Make it better than mine. Pulling Andy Sabota. I talked about Andy Sabota. Andy was one of the best tires, still is, I ever met in my life. <clears throat> it's one of the things I didn't like about him. Just kidding. But Andy had this saying. The first time I met him, he's a skinny little punk. And he says, he walks up to me at the Chicago show and he says, you know, 
I've never had an original idea in my life, but I sure made a lot of your flies better. <laughs> he was right. Uh, he has, but one of those guys will tie one of these and make it even better. So <clears throat> I'm going to take this and I'm going to, you can do not skimp on this, but don't make it so thick that you can't because there, this is the key of doing all these head styles. When I started this head style in the, in the 90s, we we're using wool. First, you know, I, I would see people tying them and they always, their heads were just gigantic thick. They, you, you don't want this. You, and, and we're going to glue these eyes on with super glue. We're not going to do them with any, I'm not going to use the other ones that they fall off. <clears throat> but I need you to start with a one third of this. We've got the remaining hook here, right? And we're going to do this in thirds. So I'm going to have one third right here. Then I'm going to come forward to the next one at the one third. And we're going to have a bare shank hook. So I've got, and, and I can't tell you how much of this to use. If when you tie it in, when you look at it, it should be about as thick, just about as thick as the marabou. But, you know, not, not too thick. Just, it's just, it's just no way you're going to have to tie one in. You'll tie it in. You can, you can cut it if you want. It's better if you do this without cutting it. So I'm going to set this, I'm going to just give myself a little bit of wax on that thread. It holds it a little better. I'm going to take this and I'm going to, you can see how much I'm working with, right? Not, not a lot, quarter, half a pencil. And you're going to wrap it around your finger. And when you look at this, I don't know where I'm going to be able to see it. There you go. Right there. We're going to make a little, a U right there. Kind of a, it's going to be a little oval like that. And what that does is when you, you wherever you want this, if you're going to put a, a spot on the edge, you could put it on the side. I'm coming from underneath and I set it right where I want it. I lock it and I'm done. Now, make sure when you look at this, so when you come up, pull right on the bottom two turns and just crank it you're done and just make sure that it stays right where you want it is it right in the middle of the fly on the bottom when you look over top of this don't have some here don't have some there have it right underneath it if it's not right it's so simple to do this if it's not right you back it off you move it and just tighten it down right there hold it in your hand now take some of your uh oh, <coughs> excuse me, Marabou knows. <laughs> Can't believe it took that long. We are in a safe environment right here. There's just me and Jeremy. I need a mask. Yeah, where's the mask? All right, now we're going to take this other color right here and we're going to put it in here with a and just and this is going to be your chance to look at this one last time. This first one I make just a little bit thicker because the throat is skinnier. The top is a little thicker. It's got to come over and cover all this stuff. Remember when the thirst, now look right here. See how you can see the hook? You can see my hook body. Now this one, make sure that it's going to be sufficient to go back over top of that. Don't have it short. Same thing. You fold it across. You should be able to see it even better there on top. Come in on the top, go one, Two, look for it to be even and crank on it. Still see the hook. See the hook shank? That's the key. Now move forward to the, re the remaining one third. Repeat. This is the fun thing because these heads are so cool looking when you trim them out. Now, way more than I need. <clears throat> Got marabou going up my beak. This one should be slightly smaller than the first one. But again, you can, you can pull on this. You can pull some of the fibers out. But once you put the eye on, it's bringing pretty much dead on done. And when you're sorting that, just put it right back in there. You'll, it'll, you can use it over and over. Move it over and over, but you can keep. There you go. So we got about, not just maybe just slightly less than we started with. I think I need a little bit. And this just, you'll get used to what you like the looks of, how, how much build. And when you, you know, how you trim your heads out will come, that'll come into play too. So now we're back to the, where I'm at the one third point. Just wrap it around the thread, come in, find that one third, one, two, nice tight, crank it. Now. 
Make sure this is stranded out. When you, when you work with this, don't work with a bunch of little short ones. Make sure that when you pull them, that you've got plenty. As long as when you tie it in and you go to work with it, they don't all fall out. So just kind of sort it. We do, man, we do a lot. This is belly bumpers. All, every fly, a ton of my flies has, has this style head. So we're just going to blend this now with the, the last one. And again, not so much that you wrap around. So right there, I can still see my hook. When you put that, when you set it, pull it nice and tight, and then just crank it. Now we're going to come forward. <clears throat> That's going to get, you're going to work forward on this. It's all going to be, uh, don't worry too much about this uh, whip. I mean, get a good whip finish on it. But you're going to glue this thing, and it's not, there's never going to have a chance for it to come undone. So, when we look at this, and I just turned it over so you could see both sides. When we look at this, everything's getting nice. You get a nice mohawk going here. Everything's clean. Clean everything up. If you want to take a brush and comb it down and see where, you know, just see where you're at. I, I don't do that, but if you want to, you know, you can kind of... You'll know just by doing this with your hand. But when you look at that, you see the hook shank, and over here you see the hook shank. That's the critical part of this. That's what I was saying earlier. When people first started doing this style of head, because it, uh, and I mean, we came up with this back, like I said, in the 90s, and we were doing those uh, TNA rainbows and alewife patterns, and we wanted this big eye on it, and we were doing it, and you'd see people, and they'd, their eyes were loose. They were they're hanging off the side of the the uh, the material because they had so much material on there that they when they would put their eye on, basically it wasn't touching the hook, and so the it was just as strong as the material. Well, hell, the material is not that strong. If if yours isn't right, if you don't see this hook shank right here, come in here and clip this off. Just cloak. Just take it out. But make sure you can see the hook on both sides, and everybody's groovy. Now we're going to take the uh, Jurassic Eye, or whatever. I don't care what eye it is. And I'm using. I'm going to use a six millimeter on this. You could go to a seven. I wouldn't put an eight on here. Um, just whatever size fits. You know, whatever you like the looks of. But. On some of these, unlike the, the bang tail or the flat liners and the bang tail, the bigger ones, uh, I, I use, I've used 10 millimeter eyes on some of those, especially on some of those big eyes, those gizzard shads, the ones that shit their head, their, half their head's an eye. And so it, it just looks good. And it's a, I for sure think it's a target. I, I think they come in and hit that. Set, set your eyes here. If they've got a pupil, Make sure the pupil's going forward because if your pupil's not completely, perfectly level, they'll never eat this fly. Liar. Okay. Now, I have a system with this when I, when I do these, especially on the big ones. Man, if you, <laughs> when you start putting this glue on, if you go too much, if you, and you go to do this, some guy wrote in, he said, lick your fingers. Well, that helped. It really did because it didn't stick. But when I do this with the crazy glue, I've never had an eye fall off. I've had them break in half, but I've never had them fall off. All the other, if you want to do UV, great, do it. It doesn't work as good as it does this for me. You know, you, you can do whatever you'd like, obviously. So when I do this, uh, I do, I put one drop of glue and this, this is, you know, zap. And I go right dead in the middle of this right here. And I'm going to put, I got to have this leveler to show you. But I'm going to put just one, these are only six millimeter eyes, so don't go crazy with this glue. And, and just look at it, put the drop on there. I'm trying to get the, all right, there it came out. Look to see that it's not, you didn't put seven millimeters of oval around there. So just enough so that you can get the eye on in the middle. I'm going to put it right in the middle of the, the hook. I'm a little bit back there. And just, just enough to cover. I'm just going to let that kick a little bit. Don't let it set yet. 
then flip it over. And we used to use the doll eyes and that they would actually weld right to the backside of each other. So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to give it, come on, come on, come on, one drop, not heavy. I'm, I'm, I'm letting it soak through before I, so there's one and then there's the second one. I'm still, don't do that fast because we're only using six millimeter eyes, which are tiny. And so as it soaks through, it's going to the other side. And I'm going to put this eye and I'm just feeling around to kind of make sure it's, you know, they're up there. And then lick your fingers. And if you squeeze that, with the plastic eyes, you would actually feel them. You would feel them weld right to the back side of each other. Just make sure they're on the opposite sides of each other. And then don't squeeze so hard that if you, if you have too much glue on here and you squeeze this really hard like this, uh, if you have too much glue, you're going to go like, and you're going to be stuck to the thing and you'll have a fingerprint on the eye for the rest of its life. Okay. So there we go. Now, fun part, get your marabou down out of the way, get the mohawk rolling. And first thing we do is come right straight up. Just cut it flat, right flat down the front. No tapers now. And then just, just work this into the marabou. Don't cut your marabou. Keep it down nice and just in. I know my shoulder's kind of covering it up. And then just same thing on the bottom, roll it into the fishes or to the throat. So now you're going to see this is a great little bluegill platter too if you want to do a bluegill fly. <clears throat> Make it look like a bluegill that is. You can do this, like I said, you can sculpt this up as any way you want. Make sure you're looking at your marabou's all blending into itself and just roll that back into it. Leave the head just slightly bigger than you. Th it, it's going to, when it gets wet, it's going to just compress just a little tiny bit. Just flip it over and just get a nice clean, just like that. So we got, that's good. Maybe just a little bit more off his face. That was kind of rough. There. So that is the mini bang tail. <clears throat> this thing, like I said, you can do it in, get him off of there. Get everything nice and clean. You can see what's going to happen with this fly. All these layers are going to lay down. You're going to have a little bit of that sparkle in between. If you look at the fly, you want me to turn that a little bit, Jerry? Oh, you're good. Just hold it there. Right there. So what you see is you've got a little bit of the gold, not a lot coming through the marabou on each side. You got a little kicker down here. You've got your tail that's flopping back and forth. Your head shape. It's a nice. It's not going to compress much. It weighs nothing. This fly, it's none of that material because we glued right in the middle. Those eyes are is all glue. Head can't come undone. It's a really indestructible fly. And you can see you can shape it however you'd like. You get a nice big profile. This fly weighs nothing. It is so fast. It casts like nothing and it swims like crazy because everything in there is a natural material and it's going to undulate like crazy for you. Gives you the perfect four inch uh, profile, which we're looking for. That's a, I, I just, you know, overall fish catching, maybe not when you're just simply hunting the one, if you want one 30 inch fish. Uh, but I, I tell you, I've caught a lot of high twenties fish on these four inch flies. I think they're, I think they're way more effective on the overall fish counts. It's still a giant profile. It is still a big profile considering what we used to fish was this big. And so, but the, the key to it is that it's really, really light and swimmy. Now I said I was going to cut this back hook off, but I'm not because I don't have any nippers here. Uh, all I've got are scissors, but I'm going to, this is, this is the, the saltwater version. And if we're doing articulate on these streamers for the competition, don't care if it's articulated, don't care if it's not if it's a single hook, but I've gone into a bunch of my flies are going into a single hook version, right? And this was one of the first ones right here. It's that fly. 
It's a bang tail. On a, this was the saltwater version. We're gonna do this in, in the trout version too in five colors, I think. But all I did, I don't like, I didn't use a shank. I don't like shanks, all right? I, I don't have any problem with them. I just think it's, it's cheaper, faster, and easier for me to tie on a hook. And so all this is, is I went in there and I just cut this hook off right there. Nothing more. I simply cut the hook off and what I ended up with was a hookless back end. And so it's a simple way to do the same thing. If I had a pair of nippers, I'd come in here and I'd cut that hook right off, boom. And you just have, a, all you'd have is a shank. If you're digging shanks, if you like to use them, great. It doesn't matter, it's just, I, I like to tie in the hook. It's a little easier for me. So remember, you gotta send us the fly. You got, we're gonna have three flies in this series this week. They're all gonna be streamers. The fly can be anything you want and it's, everything goes. Don't care how big, how little, it doesn't matter. We're gonna judge it. Whoever wins this one gets a $250 gift certificate. We move on. Whoever wins the grand gets the Maverick or the Renzetti Vice of their choice. So, hope you liked it. Hope it helps you out.